Welcome back everyone. I think we are all hoping it would be figured out by now, but the Lakers continue to have multiple spots open on their 15-man roster. And following a report from Jovan Buha of The Athletic, it's pretty much all but confirmed that they likely won't be filling one with Christian Wood either, or at least if the Miami Heat don't pull off a very specific kind of Damian Lillard trade. Because according to that report, Christian Wood is quote unquote, interested in a potential role with Miami depending on what players are involved in a Damian Lillard trade, likely referring to if they acquire Yusuf Nurkic with Damian Lillard or not. Now, there is no guarantee that Lillard will even be traded to Miami, let alone be traded anywhere, but that does appear to be what Christian Wood is waiting for, and he will likely continue to wait for it until training camp. And knowing that, unless the Lakers are willing to wait for another month for him, which would not even involve them being its top destination, then they should likely turn in a different direction. I mean, why prioritize a guy who quite obviously views them as a backup plan? Who knows, maybe things could change between now and then. But in my opinion, he might not even be worth the risk anyway. He could potentially help them, but he could also potentially hurt them too. Despite being a great offensive player, Christian Wood leaves a lot to be desired on defense, and then many people claim that he can tend to be a locker room problem as well. And with all of that in mind, it might be time for them to begin looking elsewhere. There might not be much available, but there is still value to be had on the open market, both at center and on the wing if they are willing to wait until the buyout market or the trade deadline to add another big to their rotation that way. So in today's video, we are going to talk about their best remaining free agent options, with a big priority being put at center, but also a couple options in other areas too. But real quick before we get into it, I would really appreciate it if you could take a brief moment to drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and hit that notification bell to never miss out when I upload a video. Without wasting any more time here though, let's dive right into it. And for free agent option number 1, we'll begin by reviewing Mamadi Diakite. Now, you might not be familiar with him, but he's been in the NBA for a few years now, all of which have involved him playing on a two-way contract, but he's quietly been improving each and every year. It would be rather difficult to tell from his NBA numbers, but he's proven to be above the G League competition. Every time he's gone down there, he's quickly been brought back up, and in 24 total G League games, Diakite has put up about 18 points, 9 rebounds, 2.1 blocks, shot 54.1% from the field, and then 36.1% from 3. He can kind of do it all for a big, and while he's a bit of a hybrid between being a power forward and a real center, he's definitely big enough to play the 5 in the modern NBA. I mean, he's 6 foot 9 with a 7 foot 4 wingspan, and he's pretty athletic for his size too, being able to be a lob threat, a solid rim protector, and can even switch on defense a little bit too. Now, he obviously cannot be regarded as a proven NBA player, but I really do think he deserves an opportunity, and whether or not that's with the Lakers, I would like to see Diakite get some more playing time. But now moving on to number 2, and here we have Lindy Waters the third. I mentioned him during my video I made about underrated free agents, and I really do think they should take a look at him. No, he might not be a center, but Lindy Waters could definitely help address their need for more 3 point shooting, and then not to mention that he's a pretty good wing defender too. He might not jump out at you with a career 3 point percentage of only 36%, but the difficulty of shots he's taken and made should catch your attention, and not only that, but the pure amount of them that he's been able to get up in limited minutes too. In only around 15 minutes per game of action, Lindy Waters put up about 5 three-point shots per game, which equates to over 11 of them per 36-man average, a pretty astounding number for a lesser-known role player. And if not for the Oklahoma City Thunder having a boatload of young talent, he would likely be playing for them still too. He was not let go due to being a bad player, he was simply a casualty of them having too many draft picks but not enough space on their 15-man roster. In my opinion though, Lindy Waters should be on a team right now, and I believe he is good enough to be given a standard contract, not a two-way contract, or even a non-guaranteed minimum level contract either. I really think he could immediately come in and fill a 3 and D role for them, and if they would ever deal with an injury to one of their wing players, then Lindy Waters would be a luxury to have as a 14th or 15th man for them. But now moving on to number 3, and here we have Wayne and Gabriel. At this point, Gabriel should really be at the top of their list. They're already familiar with him, and then he's proven that he can provide value at either power forward or center within their rotation. Now, he definitely is a bit matchup dependent, but they can afford to have a guy like that with Anthony Davis and Jackson Hayes in front of him, and especially if Gabriel can show further improvement. 
In addition to that, he would likely be willing to take a non-guaranteed contract at this point too. I'm really not sure why, but he's not gotten much of any attention on the open market. We're not talking about a starting level player here, but Winding Gabriel can definitely provide value on the right team. And I for one would really like to see him get back to becoming a decent 3 point shooter for them again. I'm not sure if Darvin Ham told him to quit taking them or something, but Winning Gabriel was very hesitant when it came to taking 3 point shot attempts last season. And for a hybrid player like himself, he really does need to provide that with him not being an elite defender. I mean, he definitely is above average, and was even ranked as the third best defender on their team per defensive Raptor rating, but he's not in that elite category. I know they would prefer more of a 3 point shooting option here, but Wending Gabriel would not be horrible for them at this point. There's not a whole lot to pick from here, and at least they know what they would be getting from him. But now moving on to number 4, and here we have Stanley Johnson. Another guy they are familiar with, they will legally be allowed to sign him on August 24th, one year after they traded him and Taylor Horton Tucker to Utah for Patrick Beverly. And with the Utah Jazz having waived him shortly after that, that triggered a rule that prevented his former team from signing him for one full year, but now with that soon coming to an end, Stanley Johnson could be an option for them again. And much like Wayne and Gabriel, I'm kind of shocked that no one's picked him up yet. He had a very underrated stint with San Antonio, putting up 5.8 points, shooting 53% from the field, and 45% from three all while providing his very reliable defense. Now I know the Lakers are rather deep at forward, but it would not hurt to bring in a guy like Stanley Johnson. LeBron and Anthony Davis love him, he's proven to be a great locker room guy, and then he could contribute if they ever deal with an injury. In my opinion, he would be a luxury to have as their 14th or 15th man. And who knows, maybe he could even play his way into their rotation. We know that Darvin Ham loves hardworking defenders after all, and that's exactly what I would call Stanley Johnson. But now moving on to our 5th and final option, and that of course happens to be Bismack Biombo. If not for Christian Wood, the most proven center option remaining is without a doubt Bismack Biombo. And much like Wood, he was likely holding out in hopes of getting a bigger contract than a veteran minimum, but at this point, I kind of doubt he'll get anything more than that. Even with Biombo being a truly great rebounder and rim protector, he does not provide much of anything else. And in today's NBA where versatility reigns supreme, there is only so much a guy like that can offer. Although let's not act like he would not help them, Biombo would be a great option for their third center, and he might even become their second one depending on how they utilize AD and Hayes, or even if Hayes cannot prove to be reliable, which has been a problem for him in the past. I know a lot of people like to point out the fact that Biombo is only around 6 foot 8 or 9, but it's not like height is what makes a good center, and Biombo would not be entering his 11th year in the NBA without being a reliable player. And not to mention that the guy is an absolutely ridiculous 7 foot 6 wingspan. He definitely knows how to use it too, averaging over 3.5 blocks per 36 minute average last season. But to wrap everything up here though, there are a number of quality free agents remaining on the open market. And while I did not mention them, a guy like Markeith Morris or Tristan Thompson would not be a horrible option for them either, especially if they value familiarity and team chemistry. With all of that being said though, what do you guys think? Who would you like to see the Lakers go after if Christian Wood is no longer an option for them? Comment your thoughts down below. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.